Studio 6 Productions presents... Curly Neal's Basketball Camp with former Harlem Globetrotter Curly Neal. Hi, I'm Curly Neal. My friends and I are just getting warmed up to show you some of the basics of basketball. You know, when I used to play with the Harlem Globetrotters, I knew a few fancy tricks of my own. And when I got started, I had to learn the basics just like you. Let's start now by explaining how the game works. Let's go. The first thing to know as you begin to learn the basics of basketball is how to start. There are five players on each team. One side tries to score goals by shooting the ball through the basket. And the other side tries to defend the basket by keeping their opponents from scoring and by trying to steal the ball away. The side who is trying to score is called the offense. The side that is defending the goal is called the defense. There are five positions. Two guards, two forwards, and a center. Guards are considered ball handlers and usually stand here on the basketball court. It is their job to get the basketball to a teammate who will score. Forwards are usually the best rebounders and they stand here on the basketball court. Their job is to get the ball when someone misses a shot. Centers are the taller players on the team. The center stands in the middle of the lane and guards the basket. Since the center is tall, the guards and forwards try to get the ball to him when they are being guarded closely by the other team because he has the best chance of scoring. The center also has another important job. When two teams start playing, they begin the game with a jump ball. The centers from both teams face each other, and a referee throws the ball up in the air between them. Each one tries to tip the ball to his own players so that they can score. Remember, though, no matter what position you play, everyone on the team tries to shoot baskets and score points. Next, let's watch how Curly demonstrates a jump ball. On a jump ball, you want to jump as high as you can and push the ball towards your teammates with the tips of your fingers. Rebounding means getting the ball as it bounces off the backboard or the rim of the basket after a player misses a shot. As you can see, when Curly goes up for a rebound, his feet leave the court completely and he gets his hands right up next to the basket. This way, he is making sure that he will catch the ball as it comes off the backboard before the other team gets it. As you know, you score points in basketball by shooting the ball through the hoop. This is called a field goal and is worth two or three points, depending on where you are shooting from. A good way to score field goals when you are starting out is by practicing the bank shot. Aim the ball at the square on the backboard behind the basket. If you can hit the square, the ball will usually fall through the hoop. Another shot that you want to practice is the free throw or foul shot. This shot is only worth one point, but sometimes that's all it takes to win or tie the game. Stand with your feet behind the free throw line. This is located here, at the top of the lane in the circle we call the key. You cannot step over this line until the ball hits the rim or the backboard. Hold the ball firmly but comfortably so that it rests in the palm of your bottom hand and your top hand fingers are gripping it on the seams. Then bend your knees and extend your arms as you throw the ball toward the basket. When you let go of the ball, push it with your hand and fingers.
Isn't that easy? Yeah! Yeah! Yes, you believe you can do that? You know, ball handling means so many great things. First, you have to get the feel of the ball and the position of it, see? Two fingers, finger tip control. Pull it around, y'all. It takes a little practice. See me? All right. See, but just get the position of the finger, see? On the ball and get the feel of it. And make the basketball a part of you. See, then you can just roll it around your arm. Back and forth. See how easy that is? Okay. You guys learn anything? Yeah. Okay, you believe you can do it? Yeah. Well, I know you can. Okay? Nice session. Give yourselves a hand. And me too. When you are learning to dribble, you need to learn fingertip control. This means that you do not slap the ball with the palm of your hand. You push the ball down with your fingertips. This will help you to know where the ball is going and to keep control of it. Another bad habit you don't want to get into when dribbling is palming the ball. This means bouncing the ball by rolling it over with your hand and wrist as you dribble. If you use your fingertips when you practice, you won't get into this habit. Our next skill is the most fun. It's called dribbling whether you walk or run. Okay? Demonstration first. That's it. Right in. Continue to keep your head up, okay? Okay? Ben, you try it now. There you go. Okay. Gotta use your left hand and the right hand. Right hand, and you come back. Okay, now you cross over and use your left hand. Okay, next. Keep your head up now, keep your head up. Very good, very good, very good. That's right hand and left hand, okay. Fingertip control, right hand, left hand. There you go, Stephen. Bend your body a little bit, Stephen. Bend your body down a little bit. There you go. Gotta look up now. You might wanna see your players down the court. You might need to pass to them. Okay? There you go. Use that left hand to bend your body a little bit. Bend your body down low. There you go. Okay. And then can you see down court? See your teammate down court? Okay. Okay, Kevin. There you go. Bend your body a little bit, Kevin. Bend your body a little bit. Okay, you gotta keep your head up, keep your head up. There you go. Very good, Kevin. Okay, sweetheart. There you go. Left hand, left, in and out, right, there you go. Okay, a little faster. Let's see if you can pick up a little speed, a little speed. There you go. Okay, all right, very good. There you go, there you go, that's fast. Now there's a basketball player right there, good. There you go, nice right hand, left hand, fingertips. There you go, very good. Okay, there you go. Now cross over, there you go, right hand, now back to your left hand. Okay, keep your head up. Okay, a little faster, see if you can speed it up a little bit. Okay, very good, very good. Okay. Remember, when dribbling around the chairs, to keep your head up, change hands, and try to go faster each time. When you are playing basketball, you cannot walk or run while holding the ball. You must always dribble when you move your feet. If you don't, it's called traveling, and that is a violation. This is dribbling. This is traveling. Remember that when you dribble, you can only use one hand at a time. If you use both hands, that is called a double dribble, and that is a violation. All right, let's see. Okay. Okay, the two main passes in basketball are called a chest pass and a two-handed bounce pass. Now, I will demonstrate first, okay, the two-handed chest pass. From the chest, flip of the wrist. Take that step. Very good. Okay, one more time. 
Okay, now the bounce pass. Okay, take that step. There you go. Good form. Nice form. Very good. Now, gang, are we ready? Yeah! Okay, now, let's start it off and get into it. Okay? There you go, Ben. Take that step, Ben. Okay, nice pass. Nice. Take that step. There you go. Good. And you know why we use these passes on our offensive team? That's to score points, to keep them away from the defensive team. That's what you call the chest pass and the two-handed bounce pass. Okay? Hey, very good. Take that step now. Okay, low form. There you go, Kevin. All right. Okay, great. Great job. Now give yourselves a hand. Okay. All right. Keep going. Okay. For the chest pass, keep your elbows bent pointing downward with the ball resting on your chest. Step in the direction you are passing the ball and push the ball away from your chest with your hands. For the bounce pass, you hold the ball the same way as the chest pass, with your elbows bent, pointing down, and the ball against your chest. But instead of pushing the ball toward your teammate, Bounce it just in front of him so that he can catch it easily without it going over his head. And since we're all involved in basketball now, what are the positions on the court? Could you tell me? Anyone tell me? Yes. Two guards, two forwards, one center. That's correct. How many players do we have? Okay. Five. Five. Correct. Now, can anybody tell me what a rebound is? I see a hand right here. When you get the ball off the backboard after someone shoots it. That's correct. Now, can anybody tell me what traveling is? You know, when the referee blows his whistle and say traveling, what is that? Yes, sweetheart. When you're walking with the ball and you're not dribbling it. Hey, that was great. Very good. Though Curly played professionally for many, many years, he had to start learning the basics, just like you. We spoke to Curly about his early years in basketball. I started playing at the age of 12, and that's really kind of late for kids to start playing. They normally start playing from 8, 9, 10, but uh, it was a little late for me, but it was the first love for me. My mom worked late in the evenings, about 7 o'clock, so when I got out of school, I would spend an hour or two of homework, and then I would go out and and stay on the basketball court until she got home. At the uh, ninth grade, I, I was on the junior varsity for the first half of the season. Then uh, I became better with just practice and practice. And uh, I joined the varsity team uh, my, uh, the end of my uh, ninth grade year. And then I played varsity in my sophomore, junior, and senior years in high school. And made all state uh, a couple of years in basketball. Curley has always tried to stress the importance of a good education to kids of all ages. In fact, Curley says without his education, he might never have become a Harlem Globetrotter. I always specify education because athletes last for so long in life. So uh, education is number one in my phase. So uh, that's something you can always turn back on and have a job and support your family throughout life. Curley's view on teamwork. Teamwork is the main phase, you know, and getting along with, you, with your teammates and working together, that's the main thing, and, uh, and you'll go a long way. Next, Curly shows us some of the skills you need to practice most. You know, basketball can be a great friend. All you need is a ball and a hoop and lots of practice. And if you want to join your local Y, a church school, or even high school team, all you need is practice and good teamwork, I tell you. Hey, wait a minute, Andy. Look here, we need some teamwork. Okay, some sportsmanship, and we have to try to help each other in this type of situation, okay? When you are playing ball with your friends or with your team at school, remember to demonstrate good sportsmanship. Everyone on a team has something to contribute. Taller players may score baskets easier, but shorter players are sometimes the best defenders or rebounders. 
So don't bully anyone. Just enjoy the game and have fun. Next thing you need to learn to improve your basketball skills are some simple defenses. Here are some examples. The most common defense in basketball is the man-to-man -man defense. Here, a player is assigned to guard another player, no matter where he goes on the court. He stays with his man and tries to steal the ball away or prevent him from scoring. In a zone defense, players are given a portion of the court to guard, and they stay in that area. Guards, for example, usually defend the right and left front of the lane. The forwards defend the right and left back of the lane, and the center defends in the center of the lane. In using zone defenses, the defending team sets up their defense as soon as the ball leaves their possession. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the foul shot, okay, which is known as the free throw. Normally when you get fouled, you go to the free throw line and you have to make it. Nine times out of ten, you make it, you win the game, tie the game, or either lose it, okay? And my hands are normally right at the seams of the ball, okay? And when I flip the ball up, I bend my knees and I use my wrist, okay? Action. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. One more, okay? One more. Demonstration. Okay. Now, why don't you try it, okay? That's close. That's close. That's close. You gotta bend those knees now. There you go. All right. Okay. All right. Now, come on. You wanna try it too? Yes. Okay. It's one second on the clock, okay? You have two free throws. The score is tied, okay? And you have to make one of these to win the game. You have two shots to do it. Hey! Okay? Let's get one of the other guys. Wes, why don't you come and try to show it? Use that form now, okay? Like you just did a few minutes ago. All right, that's close, that's close, that's close. Bend the knees now, a little concentration now. Take your time, nobody's guarding you. Not bad, Wes, but first, let me show you how I shoot it, okay? First, I grip the ball with the seams right here, okay? My, rest, my left hand resting here under the basketball, okay? Then at the bending of my knees, while I have total concentration at the basket, and I also square my body up so I can have total concentration, and keep my eye on the rim, and I shoot and follow through. See? Nice and clean. So you can stand here and make them all day. See? See, when the ball leaves my hand, you still see my form. Okay, I shoot one more and we move to the jump shot. Foul shots. Stand with your feet behind the line. Knees bent. The ball is held firmly with the palm of the hand under the ball and the fingers of the top hand gripping the seam. Extend your arms as you shoot, pushing the ball up to the basket. When you finish the shot, the top hand will be bent in a gooseneck fashion. This is called the follow-through and is very important. Okay, this is called a jump shot. What I do is shot something like the foul shot, okay? I bend my knees when I'm shooting. Then I extend my arm and leave special form and follow-through when I go through and shoot the shot. Demonstration. Okay? Rafael, why don't you come over and try it, okay? Now bend those knees and keep that arm straight. There you go, good form. Try it again, good form. Okay, now did you notice, did you notice 
When he shot his ball, his ball didn't spin that much. He had a sort of a dead ball on it. But if you put a little bit more spin on it, sometimes you will tend to make the basket more than miss it. Okay, try it one more time. Spin? Yes, a little spin on it. And follow through, and follow through. You didn't follow through that much. Good shot. Give him a hand. Okay. All right. Stand with your feet shoulder length apart, knees flexed, and hold the ball comfortably with your hands. Do not hold the ball with your palms. Place just the fingers and thumbs on the sides of the ball. Keep your eye on the front of the rim as you shoot and concentrate. As you shoot, extend your body, pushing on the balls of your feet. Your shooting wrist is cocked back from the forearm. As you release the ball, push off the floor on the balls of your feet and straighten your body as you rise. Your shooting hand then pushes the ball toward the basket as your arm is fully extended. As the ball leaves your fingertips, the left hand drops away and the shooting hand is brought down quickly to give the ball some backspin. When you have finished the shot, your shooting hand faces the floor with your wrist hanging limp. Again, the follow through is very important. The set shot is the same too as the foul shot. Only uh, one person I know that shoots the set shot, Larry Bird, okay? He's a set jump shooter, okay? He's not really jumping, he's just like a set shot, one-handed. Again, two, bending of the knees, okay? Then the wrist action and the fingertips. Set shot, okay? And you can shoot this shot. Normally, you can shoot this shot norm, normally around the three-point surface. That's where you get three points for the shot. Field goal, okay? Set shot. Okay. Okay, Jeff, why don't you come in and try to shoot the one-hand set shot, okay? Okay, but don't forget now to bend those knees and keep your eye on the basket and extend that arm out with follow through. That's close. There you go. Good shot. Good shot, Jeff. Make another one for me. Make one more for me. That's close. That's close. You want to try to set shot? Okay. Nice shot. Nice shot. Okay, Jeff, let's bring this lady in here and try it, okay? This is called a one-handed set shot. And you bend your knees now and then shoot it up. That's close. You got to bend your knees a little bit more to get it up there. So you got to flip it. Let me show you one more time. See, right here. And bring it back this way. See, you're trying to shoot this way. Okay? You got to bring it back and use that wrist. Hold, hold, hold. I got you. See, your hand is too far down. Bring your hand underneath. See, you can't shoot it down like that. Your hand needs to be under the ball. Okay? See, you got it up better. You got it up there. Look in there. Now it's about time for you to make one. It's close. Okay, we'll shoot one more, then we go to the hook shot. Oh, that's close. You're getting better, isn't it? Okay, give a hand anyway. Okay. For the set shot, use the same motion as you would in a chest pass. With knees bent and elbows out at your side, Push the ball up toward the basket. Don't use too much force on the release or the ball will rebound away from your teammates. Extend your arms enough to get height on the ball so it clears the rim. Okay, first demonstration, the hook shot, okay? Normally, the hook shot is shot with my back toward the basket, okay? And I have a swing in motion, okay? Demonstration. Hook shot, okay? One more time. You notice my swing off my left foot, and I pivot. Okay? Jeff, why don't you try it, okay? 
Got to spring off that left foot, Jeff. Spring off the left foot. Now oh, you're throwing it, throwing it. Let me show you one more time, okay? See, you spring. See? It's like a little dance almost, see? You're holding that left foot back. You got to go off that left foot. Okay? Raphael, I want you to try to shoot a couple next, okay? That's close. Raphael? Bend those knees now. There you go. Nice shot. Nice, nice, nice. You see that form? You see that follow through too? There you go. Good. Good shot. Good shooting. Good shooting. The hook shot is used when approaching the basket from the side. Spring on your left foot and bring your right arm up and over your head, sending the ball into the basket in an arcing motion from the side. The main thing to remember is to gain enough momentum as you jump to take you up to the basket level. Follow through with the wrist and fingertips as you hook the ball. The next shot is called a layup shot, and this is one of the easiest shots in the game, okay? In high school, college level, or professional. You have to be able to make a layup to be on the school team, okay? What I'll do now, I'll go up toward the basket, go off my left foot and extend my right arm and shoot the ball right into that square and it'll fall right in the basket. Demonstration. Okay. And you notice I'm springing up off my left foot. Okay? Let's get some action over here. Okay. Almost, almost. Stay on the left foot, keep the ball in your hand. And always look at the basket. There you go, very good, very good, very good. Okay, one more. Almost, one more, let's make one more. Good measure, good measure. There you go, good shot. Come on, Tracy, you try it too, okay? What we're gonna do is on the left foot, okay? and extend the arm up, the form, right in the middle of the square of the backboard, and the ball will go in. We know you can make one now. We know you can make one. You gotta keep your eyes on the basket for one reason. Say you made it, okay, okay, all right. Okay, let's get a few guys here to do the layup. Wes, okay? You guys make layups, right? Put behind each other. Okay? Okay, there you go. Okay. The layup can be done any number of ways. The object being to lay the ball into the basket from the side or as you pass under the basket. As you jump, your momentum, or forward motion, and fingertip action let the ball roll off in the direction of the basket or backboard. Once you have the ball up against the backboard, its own momentum should carry it into the basket. Another skill you can practice on your own is your dribbling. Here are a few drills that will help you become a better ball handler. When you are dribbling behind your back, you want to keep the ball moving. So it is important to practice fingertip control. Place your fingers over the top of the ball and push down as you dribble. Once you have control, use a rocking motion as you bring the ball behind your back and change hands. Push the ball from hand to hand behind your back rocking your body in the direction that you are pushing. Once you get the rhythm, you're all set. There you go, Tracy, there you go. All right, let's give a hand there. Hey, yeah. Everybody ready? Yeah. Okay, let me show you another pass, which advanced points on the scoreboard to help your team win, okay? It's called the baseball pass. And normally the baseball pass starts when you get a rebound off the board grab it and throw it down to your teammate okay demonstration okay rebound i got it down the court okay very good okay jeff you ready rebound nice pass okay roll curl 
Rebound. Down the court. Take it off too fast, Mike. That's all right. Okay? Rebound. Very good. Let's give him a hand, okay? Let's give him a hand, okay? Next pass is what you call a shovel pass. And a lot of teams like Boston and uh, the Lakers, they use a the shovel pass to get the ball inside and try to score, okay? Demonstration. The shovel pass is like this. To your teammate, okay? You can do it with your left hand, like that. Okay? Right there, Brian. Shovel pass. Okay, demonstration. Brian, let me try you here, okay? Demonstration. Shovel pass to, to Tracy, okay? There you go. Shovel pass again. Okay? Wes, come on here, Wes. You try it, Wes. Shovel pass. Shovel pass to him right there. Underneath, underneath. Let me show you. Demonstration, demonstration. Shovels. You got to pass it fast, see? Okay? And I see a guy breaking toward the basket. You shovel it right under there. Okay? There you go. Good. Come on. One more for the shovel pass. Okay. Very good. For the shovel pass. Got it? There you go. Good. And nine times out of ten, you don't even have to look. Just feel him, okay? Just do it like that. There you go. Good job. Good job. Okay, let's get in the circle over here. Everybody had fun? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You learned anything today? Yeah. Okay, we're going to have a question and answer session now, okay? Right here. What is the most important thing about joining a team? Okay, yes. Teamwork and sportsmanship. Very good. What kinds of defenses have we worked on today? Yes. Zone and man-to-man. -man. Very good. What are the four basic shots in basketball? Yes. Hook shot, foul shot, layup, and jump shot. Very good. Now, can anybody tell me what a baseball pass is? Yes. A, a long, one-handed pass down court to receiver. That's great. I hope you had a wonderful time today, and I hope you've learned something. So we'll see you next time. Many of you may want to continue on in your basketball careers to college or the pros. Curly gives some advice on what to do. You need to be dedicated and determined and practice, you know, because, uh, uh, like I say, athletes only last for so long, and uh, you have to maintain a, a grade level, you know, to go in order to go to college. And after my four years of college basketball, I was scouted in a various number of tournaments. Uh, I was scouted by four professional uh, basketball teams, uh, the New York Knickerbockers, the Detroit Pistons, uh, the Baltimore Bullets, and the fabulous Harlem Globetrotters. And I happened to choose the Globetrotters at that particular time. Out of 125 players who tried out for the Globetrotters, Curley was one of five who made it. Uh, it was like free agency, and free agency means you have to pay your own way back and forth to camps. And the Globetrotters were so nice at that particular time, they sent me a plane ticket with room and board, so I said, oh, wow, I didn't have any money at that particular time, so I said, I'll go for that. And I went on to uh, Abe Saperstein, the founder and originator of the Globetrotters, sent me a plane ticket to come to Chicago, Illinois, which uh, 125 guys from all over the United States were trying out for five positions. So I happened to be in the lucky five, just with dedication, determination, and practice during the summer. I got myself prepared, and I made the team, the Harlem Globetrotters. Curly told us about his experiences as a Harlem Globetrotter. My first year, I went around the world. I met the Pope, yes, I played before kings, queens, uh, presidents, and uh, our largest crowd has been 75,000 people in Berlin, Germany, and our smallest has been one, the Pope. We played before him at the Vatican. In our next segment, Curly shows you some of the basics that will help you begin to master the round ball. basketball have given me a great education. I've traveled all over the world, 
If you think you would like to play basketball in college or on the professional level, make up your mind right now to work hard, practice every day. There's a lot of competition out there, but if you really want it, just go for it. Here are some techniques you will need to learn. Master the round ball. This is the rebounding drill. This drill will help you, help your team advance points on the scoreboard, especially after defensive board, okay? Occasionally, we're gonna get the rebound, throw it on the board, turn around and protect the ball, look down court for your teammate, and use the baseball pass. Okay, demonstration. On the board. Nice pass. Okay. Okay, walk. Okay. Off the board. He protects the ball, see? He can run, shoot, or pass. Dribble, okay? Off the backboard. Protects the ball. Down court. You can use a two-hand chest pass, too. Overhead pass. Okay, Chris? Okay. Protects the ball. Down court. Okay? Let's switch it over. Ladies, on this side over here. Gentlemen. Okay. Ball on the backboard. Rebound. Protect it. Down court. Two-hand chest pass. Good pass. Backboard, off the rebound, protect it. Two-hand chest pass, okay, down court. Off the board, there you go, all right. Good job, great job. Practicing this drill will help your team in the offensive transition and help you to score quickly. When coming off the rebound, Land with your feet squared, facing up court. Keep your elbows out to your sides with the ball pulled in toward your chest. This will protect the ball as you get ready to pass. When you see an open teammate, move the ball up court. Earlier, we showed you how to shoot a jump shot, which is one of the most important shots you can practice. When you practice, Work on your follow-through. Follow-through means releasing the ball as you drop your shooting hand, giving the ball some backspin. Let's practice a few shots now, working on our form. Okay, notice my wrist and my follow-through. Sometimes I can make the shot just a follow-through. Okay, I'll make one more with the follow-through, okay? Well, why don't you try a couple shots? Hey, there's right in the back of the rim. That's a little bit softer, a little bit softer with the wrist, the flipping of the wrist. There you go, Walt, there you go. Let's shoot one more. Okay, let's have another kid in to shoot one, okay? Bend the knees and straight up, a little form. You can tell he's getting close because he's hitting the back of the rim. There you go, okay. Let's shoot one more. Okay. Almost, okay. Nice arc on the ball now. There you go. A little bit higher, a little bit more arc on it. With the wrist. With the wrist, nice and soft. There you go, let's shoot another one. I think you got the feel of it now. Almost, one more. You notice he, show, he shoots somewhat like I do. He doesn't jump too high off the ground. Okay, let's let the ladies shoot a couple of jump shots. Okay, to bend the knees and the arcing of the shot. There you go, nice shot. You notice her form, her form? A little bit higher, a little bit more arc on it. A little bit more arc on it. One more time. Okay, let's try the other lady. Okay, let me see two in a row at least. Okay? Now she doesn't jump as high as the other lady jump. okay? A little bit more wrist and more arc on the ball. There you go, good shot. Okay, one more. Okay. One more demonstrate, nice and high, nice and arc. Okay, you notice he's jumping a little bit higher. There you go, good form, good form. You notice his hand when, he's, when he leaves the ball? Good follow through. See this follow through carried the ball in the basket. One more. When you are practicing your jump shot, 
The most important point to remember is to follow through with your hands, wrist, and fingertips. When you have finished your shot, your hand should be pointing toward the floor with your wrist hanging limp. This will give you your backspin and momentum. We will demonstrate the inbound pass now. In order for that to, for your teammate to score a basket, we will have one member of the team to pick and roll, which is called a screen, and to free you toward the basket. Okay, demonstration. Okay. Pick to me, I fall back, then free. If not, I'll pass to my teammate, back again, and I got an easy shot. Coming off an inbounds pass, a teammate will step in front of the defender who is guarding the ball handler, creating a screen or a pick. With the ball handler then free to score or pass the ball, the teammate then rolls toward the basket to put himself in a position to receive a pass or the rebound. Fouls and penalties can really hurt a team. When your best shooters are on the bench, they are no help to the team. So learn the right and wrong way to be aggressive while playing. A point you should remember if you want to learn not to commit personal fouls is that defense is played with the feet and fouls are committed with the hands. In fact, 90% of all personal fouls called are for illegal use of the hands. Here are some examples of body contact you should avoid. Pushing an opponent is a personal foul. Going in for the ball and striking the opponents with your hands as you reach for the ball is an illegal use of hands. Running into your opponent or making contact with your chest or shoulders without setting your feet first is also a blocking foul. Never grab onto an opponent to interfere with his progress. This is a holding foul. Just remember to use your body position and to put your hands up when guarding your opponent. If you are sticking with him and being alert, there is no reason to commit fouls. In order to score a lot of points, you have to have a fast and aggressive offense. Here are some tips on how to gain the scoring advantage. Okay. One of the most effective offensive strategies is the fast break. As soon as the ball changes hands, the offensive team moves the ball swiftly up court in hopes of scoring before many of the defensive players can get into position. Another offensive strategy that is effective in breaking a defense is perimeter shooting. Here, the offensive team passes the ball from man to man, around the perimeter, until an opportunity for a play becomes available. Next, I'd like to go through some drills designed to help your defensive game. You are familiar with the zone and man-to-man -man defenses. Here are some others you might try. The defensive press is an intense defense coverage that is intended to keep the offensive team from getting the ball inside and also keeps the pressure on the offense the length of the court. Keeping your opponent from getting the ball by getting the inside position under the basket is a defensive strategy called blocking out and is very effective because it forces your opponent to shoot from the outside and gives your team a better chance of recovering rebounds. You know, as a member of the Harlem Globetrotters, I was known for some fancy footwork and fingertip control. Now guys, watch this. <laughs> Ooh, mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, that's the two. Nice pass. Let's see that one. Mm. Mm. Thanks, guys. I really had a great time. And thank all.
give yourself a hand. Give yourselves a hand. Ah. Ah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, that's all for now. I hope you learned something from us. Just remember, no matter what skill level you are at or what your dreams are, whether it's to be the best dribbler on your block or become a pro someday, basketball is a great game that you can enjoy your whole life. So have fun, stay in school, and practice. And thanks for watching. Ready, Kevin? Got it? One more time. <laughs> Fouls and penalties can really hurt a team. When your best shooters are on the bench, they are hit. Hook shot, layup. <laughs> hook shot, layup, foul shot, hook shot. Now that we've just concluded dripping through the trails, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Walt, why don't you shoot a couple? There you go. Take it down. Okay. In order to score a lot of points, you have to have a fast and aggressive offense. Here are some tips on how to gain the scoring advantage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next, I'd like to go through some drills designed to help your defensive game. You are familiar with the zone and man-to-man -man defenses. Here are some others you might try. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's laughing over here. <laughs> Here's another pass we're going to work on. It's called the in inbound pass to your teammates. <laughs>